I will not be doing a Bible review this week. Uh, next week, I intend to review this. Another large book. It's the Oxford Course and Tenery edition of the King James Bible, which comes in this massive slipcase. But to set, set the stage for that review, this week I'll do a brief, very brief, book report on Gordon Campbell's companion volume, uh, Bible, the story of the King James Version. So we'll just briefly look at this text in a few places where it's of interest to me. Here's the uh, title page, copyright page, copyright 2010, published in 2010, the first per paperback edition in 2011, and here are the ISBNs, table of contents, so you have uh, a bit about the commissioning of the King James Version, the translator is the translation, first edition, history through the centuries, Cambridge Paragraph Bibles, the revised version, and um, the King James Version in the model, modern world. We'll look at just a few things that I found of interest. First, um, here in the introduction, he does mention that the book has been prepared in tandem with another project, which is an edition of the 1611 Bible, as close as possible to the text of 1611. And that's the one we saw just a moment ago. I don't think it's actually as close as possible, because it's in Roman type, and the 1611 editions were in black letter. Um, in the introduction, he talks about the Bibles that were used by various presidents as they were sworn into office. Uh, this does not include the most recent inauguration because the book was printed before that. Here is an interesting section about the uh, theological, perhaps, bias of the translation and an interesting section about the translation of 1 Peter 1.20, whether the word should be as in the Bishop's Bible ordained beforehand, or foreordained, which is what they chose, or as in more recent translations, they mention the New American Standard foreknown, which uh, the author considers the Arminian edition, the, or the Arminian view of uh, the way to translate that verse. Later, this is, this is very useful here. There's the title page from the 1611 King James Bible, and if you've ever wondered who these characters are, uh, Mr. Campbell explains it to you here in the text on the right-hand page and the following page. So I found that quite educational. There is a section toward the middle where he talks about uh, Mr. Paris at Cambridge and Mr. Blaney at Oxford and the extent and the impact of their revisions on the King James Bible. There is uh, some language here about uh, Scrivener's Cambridge Paragraph Bible and the more recent um, New Cambridge Paragraph Bible by Mr. David Norton. Some things here about the revision of 1881 and 1885, which also became the American Standard Version in 1901. And unfortunately, there are a few errors here. Some of them have to do with uh, either a spell checker or an editor not understanding the difference between the Revised Standard Version and the Revised Version. So here's an example of a typo. The result of these changes, alas, is that the language of the RSV is flat. It, I think it's a certainty that they meant the revised version there. Uh, lovers of the well-wrought prose esteem the KJV, but cast a cold eye on the revised standard version. I don't think the I don't think the revised standard version had quite the same negative uh, reputation that the revised version does. Although myself, I am a fan of the revised version. Here's another typo. Um, the Old Testament, they, uh, Campbell says, 
that this quote from Job 13.15 in the King James Version became its exact opposite in the Revised Version. Behold, he will slay me. I have no hope. They don't mean the Revised Version here. Campbell doesn't. He means the American Standard Version. Here is uh, the Revised Version text. Job 13.15, uh, Though he slay me, yet will I wait for him. Which is essentially the same as the King James Version. Well, the American Standard Version does in fact seem to give it an opposite sense. Behold, he will slay me. I have no hope. So one other uh, similar typo page or two later where he talks about um, the Revised Standard Version in contrast to scholarship in there with that in the Revised Version and the American Standard Version. And so he's talking about two differences. On language policy, the RV differed from the ASV on two points of principle. Um, he means the Revised Standard Version here. It differed from the American Standard Version on using Lord or God instead of Jehovah, and then second, the Revised Standard Version um, dealt with the pronouns differently. It'll, it allowed modern pronouns in reference to humans. So those kinds of errors have crept in. I doubt it was uh, entirely the author's fault. Perhaps the most interesting aspect of the book is here, Appendix 1, where we have lists and short biographies of the different contributors for the six groups of translators. So here we are with the first Westminster Company, which translated Genesis to Second Kings. And as I said, brief bios on the different translators. First Cambridge Company, Old Testament. I made a marginal line there to indicate that this fellow is of interest because he was an Arminian, at least according to Mr. Campbell. The first Oxford Company, second Cambridge Company for the Apocrypha. So this actually, this appendix may be worth the price of the book to you, Second Westminster Company, New Testament Epistles, uh, the Committee of Two, Miles Smith and Thomas Bilson. Bilson is thought to be uh, responsible for the Epistle Dedicatory, and Miles Smith apparently wrote the translators to the readers. And then the revisers of the rev revised version. This is perhaps another typo. Shouldn't that read the revisers of the King James Version? So this is the English Old Testament Committee for the 1885 edition. The English New Testament Committee for the 1881 New Testament, which includes people such as uh, Henry Alford, Dean Alford, other names I recognize, David Brown, whom I believe to be the Brown of Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown, and the notorious Fenton John Anthony Hort, who apparently uh, is considered to be a satanic personality on some, on some fronts. Samuel P. Tregellis as well. And so that's the book. I, I certainly do recommend it in spite of the typos. And that will conclude this brief video. Thank you for watching, and remember to subscribe if you feel so inclined.